On this very spooky edition of Murray County Now, find out how to trick or treat with haunting in the district. The Columbia Police Department tells you how to stay safe this Halloween. Tennessee Home Garden and Design shows you how to quickly carve a pumpkin. And finally, a ghost story with Adam Southern. All this and more on this edition of Murray County Now. Hello and welcome to Murray County Now, Columbia and Murray County's news show covering the events, ideas, groups, and happenings in and around Murray County. Haunting in the district downtown is about to be flooded by goblins, ghosts, and all manner of costumed figures. Here's Cindy Sims, coordinator of Haunting in the District, to tell you about how you and your little one can get in on the fun. Hi, my name is Cindy Sims and I'm the event coordinator for Haunting in the District. Haunting is um, the community trick-or-treating that is hosted by Historic Downtown Columbia. Um, it has taken place in Downtown Columbia for many, many years now, and it's just gotten bigger and bigger. It is sponsored this year by McDonald's of Columbia. They have participated for a number of years. Um, they give so much to the community, and it is going to be a really wonderful time this year. It is also sponsored in part by Roberts Toyota this year. Um, we have many businesses from Towntown and many businesses from all over Murray County that come to hand out candy and just support this event to support the community to make sure the kids have a safe place to go. Um, our police department will be here at, in force. The fire department will be here again and the kids can um, get on the truck and try on the equipment and it's just a wonderful, wonderful event. We welcome you to Haunting in the District, October the 31st, Friday night from 6 to 8. Um, please come and eat at our Square Market or Puckett's, have a coffee um, at Mealtown Coffee um, or a sweet at Pie Sensations. You know, we, just, we would love to have you here and um, just bring your kids and enjoy yourself and um, enjoy the wonderful, beautiful, historic downtown Columbia. And for more information, you can look on our Facebook page, Haunting in the District, um, or you can call James, who is the um, Downtown Business and Professional Association President at the Old Curiosity Bookshop. Staying safe at Halloween is a top priority for the Columbia Police Department. Here's Sergeant Jeff Duncan with CPD to give us some important safety tips and information. Ah. Oh, I'm Sergeant Duncan with the Columbia Police Department here to talk to you about some safety tips for Halloween. Uh, one of the first ones when uh, trick-or-treating, when children are trick-or-treating, uh, parents should always uh, check the kids' candy uh, before the kids eat it. Also, when they're going door-to-door -to, -door to people's houses, they should never enter someone's house. Um, never enter a stranger's house. Um, always stay out. If you are handing out candy at your house, you should never invite the kids to come in to get the candy. Always do that on the front porch. Children should never accept rides from strangers while out walking the neighborhood. Children should never take shortcuts through backyards or alleyways. The parent or guardian should set a time limit for the children to be um, out and home on Halloween. Uh, children should never be uh, let to go trick-or-treating by themselves. They should have a, a group of three to five. Um, recommend uh, older uh, teen or adult to accompany, accompany them. They should carry some kind of a flashlight or at least some kind of reflecting um, material on the clothing. A lot of times at Halloween, kids uh, want to be a scary creature or something like that, and they're usually in dark clothing, uh, some kind of reflective tape or something like that to put on the kids so uh, a flashlight or a car headlights can um, will reflect off of it and notify the driver. For people that at their houses that are giving out candy, try to keep pets inside their house um, in a safe place at night instead of out in the yard because uh, all the people come from door to door. I always use the sidewalks and uh, when you're walking on the side of the street or in the sidewalks, you should stop and use caution before crossing a street. And also for the drivers, definitely should slow down on um, Halloween night because guaranteed there are gonna be kids or young uh, children out running the streets. Also on Halloween, um, if there is bad weather, uh, like there was last year, um, use common sense on going out and trick-or-treating that night. Um, Columbia Police Department, uh, does not set guidelines on what night uh, people trick-or-treat or what night people actually hand out candy. 
So it'll be up to individual neighborhoods whether or not they will be handing out candy on an alternate night due to bad weather. Normally on Halloween night, you do see an increase in, in vandalisms in neighborhoods. Um, there are some safety tips for homeowners. Um, if you are going to be home that night, uh, park your vehicle either in a garage or behind the house. Also lock the vehicle. Um, normally if it's behind the house, out of sight, usually it's out of sight, out of mind. Um, a lot of times, um, if you are going to be home trick-or-treating, um, instead of sitting in your house with the window shut or the door shut waiting on people to knock on it, sit on, out on your actual front porch um, with the candy. That way, when people um, are coming through to vandalize or be mischievous, then they'll see you outside and, and they're likely to move on to somewhere else. You can find out more information at the Columbia Police Department's Facebook page. Uh, just search on Facebook at Columbia Police Department, Tennessee. We'll be back with more Murray County Now after this. all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. Once every three hours a fire death occurs in America. 80% of these deaths could be prevented with a working smoke alarm. Hi, I'm Lee Bergeron, Chief of the Columbia Fire Department. The men and women of Columbia Fire Department would like for you to have a working smoke alarm in your home. We have a program that if you call 931-560-1700, our men and women will come and place a working smoke alarm in your residence. We know by doing this, this helps make you safer and makes our city a safer place to work and live. These smoke alarms are brought to us on a grant by Governor Haslam and Commissioner Julie McPeak. Their goal is to place 20,000 working smoke alarms in residence in Tennessee. We know and they know by doing this, we can help save lives and prevent the young and the elderly from perishing in fires. Thank you very much. We're back with more Murray County Now on PowerNet 13. With skeletons and witches on your doorstep, you're gonna need the proper decoration. Here's 10 easy steps to carve that perfect pumpkin on this edition of Tennessee Home Garden and Design. Hello, I'm Quad McFall, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Home Garden and Design. This year for Halloween, we decided to do something very special and show you at home how to carve a pumpkin using only 10 easy steps. Also, kids remember that when you're doing this, you always need your parents' supervision and their permission. Here's what you'll need. You'll need one pumpkin, a design, tape or nails, we'll be using a punch tool, a good sharp knife, we'll be using an exacto like knife for this one, baking or baby powder, a large spoon or pumpkin gutter, and a large bowl. Next, find or create a design. There are a lot of designs available online, or if you're feeling creative, you can just draw something out freehand, either on a pumpkin or on a sheet of paper for stenciling. Now you need to create a lid for the pumpkin. Cut a hole in the top and pull it off. After the top has been pulled off, you need to clear out the inside of the pumpkin. While a spoon will work, it is much easier to use a tool called a pumpkin gutter, which attaches to a drill. Make sure to thin the inside and remove all the stringy insides and seeds. Tape or nail your design to the pumpkin. Begin punching holes on the lines of the design to make cutting easier. Powder the holes with baking or baby powder to make them stand out and visible for the next step. Connect the dots of your design so you know exactly where to cut. Now it's time to carve your pumpkin. Be careful not to cut yourself and make sure you take your time. After you've carved your pumpkin, now it's time to light it up. We've used battery-operated tea lights instead of candles because it's safer.
Hopefully, with these simple and easy instructions, you'll be able to carve your pumpkin for this Halloween season. Thank you for watching Tennessee Home Garden Design, and we'll see you next time. Adam Southern is back to share one of his frightful tales. Get ready to jump out of your skin on this edition of Haunted Murray County. Ha, 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 ha. Hello, I'm Adam Southern, and this is another edition of Historic Murray County. Since we're getting close to Halloween, let's pull a, a story out of the pages of my book, Mad Murray. I will tell a story about Elm Springs. Elm Springs is a beautiful antebellum home that was built in 1837 by Murray County's master builder, Nathan Vault. And it was commissioned by a man named James Dick. And uh, James Dick was a very wealthy merchant uh, from New Orleans area. And uh, he had one sister. And this sister, he loved her to death so much so that he decided to build Elm Springs as a gift for her. And uh, when it was completed, he gave it to his sister, uh, Sarah. And Sarah moved in with her husband and uh, lived there for the rest of their lives. And uh, when they died, the home was uh, bequeathed to their daughter, Susan. And Susan uh, had married Abram uh, Looney. And together with uh, Abram Looney, they start raising a family there at Elm Springs. And I've uh, had a few good years. Elm Springs is a beautiful place. Uh, it was named for all the Elm Springs that used to grow on the property there. And uh, they had a baby boy that was born in 1850, and sadly, just a year after its birth, this baby died. And uh, of course, everybody in the family mourned this loss, but especially Susan. Uh, Susan was just overwrought with grief, and she begged and pleaded with the family, don't bury my baby. She thought the baby was still alive. But, uh, you know, they just thought that she was just so overwhelmed with grief that she was speaking out of her mind. So, reluctantly, they went and they placed the baby in the family cemetery, which is just to the left of the home. And she sat in the upstairs window and looked out at her baby's grave and cried and continued to cry and plead with this family and tell them to go dig up her baby's grave because she was sure that he was still alive and she could actually hear the baby crying. Now reluctantly some of the guys in the family went they went out to the family cemetery and they started digging up this fresh grave and what they saw was horrifying. The baby had been alive when they buried it. The baby's eyes were open, arms were reaching up towards the top of the casket, and the lining from the top of the casket had been ripped away. The baby had been trying to get out. Susan was, she was uh, correct this whole time. The baby was alive. So the men, they place the baby back in its grave, and they go back inside and tell the family of their grisly discovery. And, uh, of course, this didn't do much for Susan. She just became more distraught than she ever was. And uh, she continued to watch from that upstairs window for several months. Now, over 150 years after the baby's death, people still report hearing babies' cries coming from that cemetery. And every now and then, someone will look up towards that upstairs window overlooking the cemetery and will see the curtains pull back. And every now and then, when someone goes to take a picture of the home, a woman's face will appear in the window. So they believe that Susan is still looking over the grave of her young baby there at Elm Springs. So uh, you might want to go check it out sometime and see if you might have a, a ghostly encounter of your own. But if you're not brave enough to do that, you just want to read some more about ghost stories, come by the library and uh, check out a copy of my book, Mad Murray. Ghost Murder and Mayhem in Murray County, Tennessee. We have it here at the library for checkout. Uh, so uh, come by and read that and just come see me. Thank you. To find out more information about any of the stories you've seen on this edition of Murray County Now, check out our website at murraycountynow.com and look in the show notes for more details. Murray County Now is produced by Columbia TNTV. Thanks for watching Murray County Now, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>